Today we'll continue to talk about the data types in Swift. One important data type is called tuple. Tuple is basically a package of different kinds of data. For example, var my brother equal to Bob 27. So my brother is basically a tuple of string and integer. So a tuple can be um, a package of arbitrary number of data of arbitrary types. To extract the values out of a tuple, I can do it like this. Let name age equal to my brother. Now name is Bob and age is 27. And if the only thing I care about is the name and I don't care about the age, I can use underscore in the place of age. And now the age is ignored. Basically underscore means ignoring the value. If all you need to do is accessing the value of a particular field, there's another way to do it, which is like this. My brother dot zero, which returns Bob my brother dot one returns 27. So the fields of a tuple can be accessed by their index. Now let's create another tuple. Let my score equal to 98, 87, 95. I know these are my scores, but what scores are they? It is not clear. Tuple allows you to provide a name for each and every field. So here I can say my math is 98 and my physics is 87 and my chemistry is 95. Now it is crystal clear which score is what. And if I want to access a particular score, I can do my score.math, which will return 98. Now let's talk about another very important data type. It's called optional. Optional is basically a box that either contains another data or contains nothing. For example, var x int question mark. This is an optional of int, and initially it contains nothing, so its value is nil. And then I assign a value to it, 8. Now the optional of x contains something, and that something is 8. It is important to understand the difference between this nil and the nil in object C. In object C, nil is a pointer that points to nothing. And in Swift, nil is not a pointer, and you should not think of nil as a pointer. Nil is just an empty box. That's it. And note that x is an optional integer. In other words, it's a box that contains an integer. And to get the integer out of the box, you need to unbox it. To do that, we use exclamation mark. That will return an integer of 8. So the value is taken out from the box. Now, why do we need a data type like optional? Let's look at the example. Say we have a string which contains 98, and we want to convert this string into an integer. String has a function called toInt. Now, this toInt function returns optional. Why does it return optional? When you convert a string into an integer, the conversion could either fail or succeed. And if it succeeds, it will return an optional that contains an integer. And if it fail, it will return nil. So in this case, 98 is successfully converted to an integer, so it contains an optional that has 98. If it is a h98, then the conversion will fail and it will return nil. This is why we need a data type like optional. Because of the nature of the optional, 
often time you'll find yourself doing something like this. You get an optional from somewhere, and if the optional is not new, you do something about it. If it is new, you don't do these things. Because this kind of code happens so often, Swift provides a shortcut that does exactly that. This is called optional binding. And comparing this to the previous one, you will note that, first of all, these two lines are combined into one line. And secondly, the value z is not an optional. It's the value unwrapped from the optional. So z doesn't need to be un unwrapped. And y is an optional, and it needs to be unwrapped. This is called optional binding. It is a syntax sugar that can make your code more concise. One thing to note is that z only exists in this scope. Anywhere outside of this scope, z doesn't exist. Even if you have an else statement, z doesn't exist here. Now let's talk about another concept called implicitly unwrapped optionals. For example, var i string exclamation mark equal to hello. i is an implicitly unwrapped optional. Now this concept is a little bit tricky. What you need to remember is three things. First of all, i is an optional. i is just like y, it's an optional. And secondly, i can be assumed to have a value. In other words, it is not nil. And thirdly, i can be used as a unwrapped value from an optional. So i is an optional, but it can be used as if it is not an optional. As an example, let x1 equal to i, then x1 is a string of hello. Now let x2 equal to i unwrapped. Now x2 is just like x1, it's a string of hello. In other words, this unwrapping is optional. Another way to look at it is i is an optional that's unwrapped over here, so that later on when you want to use i, you don't necessarily need to unwrap it. Why do we need something like this implicitly unwrapped optionals? We'll talk about that in much more detail later on, but for now all you need to remember is these three things. It is an optional that is not nil, and it can be used as if it is not an optional. That's all for now. Feel free to subscribe to my channel and see you next time.